Okay, we now call to order the Committee on the Environment, Climate, and Legacy. Today, we only have one item on our agenda, and uh, it may take a while to walk through. Uh, it'll be, um, I would say, more like a relaxed um, uh, atmosphere, but be attentive to uh, what uh, we're gonna, what we, how, the, the, the uh, bills that we're gonna walk us through and you know, I want to ask uh, Mr. Mueller and Mr. Stanley to walk us through this bill. And I want to thank members especially and our staff uh, for um, working very hard in composing this bill. And today we see the fruit of our labors. Um, it may be to some members that is not fully complete, uh, but today is we just going to um, give time to walk through the bill and if there's any improvement that's needed from your end, we can entertain that on Thursday. So uh, welcome all members that are here. I also want to note that we have two members online, Senator Morrison and Senator Lane. And although we're not vote doing any voting today, uh, just want to be on the record that we do have quorum. So, um, I can do a little summary, but I think it's better to have uh, our council walk us through um, the bill. And so let's start with the fiscal note first. Uh, let's have Mr. Mueller walk us through our finance section. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm going to start off by going through the spreadsheet that is included in your packet. It's a four-page spreadsheet, and just noting up front, this committee was uh, given a target of $17 million one time from the general fund, um, so no money in the tails. Um, comparably, the governor's budget was $12 million one time from the general fund. <clears throat> so the way the spreadsheet is laid out is the first two columns are sort of collapse governor's recs for the current biennium, fiscal year 24, 25, and then the tails, fiscal year 26, 27. It doesn't show the individual years, it just shows the totals for those each biennium. And then the Senate, you'll see the, the Senate columns are next. Um, most of the spending new items in this bill will be in fiscal year 25. And then if there's tails on any items, those will be shown in, in Senate fiscal year 26, 27. And those will be mostly for non-general fund items. So I'll walk through the bill here and note each change item. Um, it starts with the Pollution Control Agency. And the first one, line four, the governor had $5 million for climate pollution reduction grants. This was a, a general fund amount to sort of do, match some federal um, funding for that. The Senate bill on line five contains a $5 million carve out of the, some of the appropriations that were in the budget bill last year. There was about $100 million that was appropriated to the PCA last year in the budget bill in chapter 60 for climate resilient re grants. And so there's language in this year's in the Article One, that would set aside up to $5 million of that previous appropriation for the matching amount. Next one on line six, the legal cost for the Pollution Control Agency. The governor had $5.5 million. This proposal has $3.5 million one time. Line number seven is the, we'll get to some Senate only items here, the Climate Adaptation and Resiliency Study. This was a Senate file 4910, Senator McEwen for 750,000. The composting grants, this was Senate file 5258 from Senator McEwen, $2 million for, this is for multifamily uh, housing units, composting grants, and that's two, two million one time. And then an electronic recycling study from uh, the Senator Kupek bill. And for that's 150,000. <clears> Next, we get into some items out of the environmental fund. Lines 11, 12, and 13 were all in the governor's budget, and they're funded at the same amount. Um, environmental justice areas, 
increased capacity, 2.975 million and then 2.625 million each year in the tails. This am amount is offset by a fee. Um, so they would balance out, with the way the air fees work is whatever we appropriate, they collect back in fees. So there'll be a revenue item later on in the spreadsheet that, um, that equals the same amount. The legal capacity for permitting is at 525,000 ongoing. Again, this is uh, the environmental fund. Then the air monitoring trailer and staff, it's uh, a little over $1 million the first year and then 535,000 ongoing. The next three items were uh, Senate only items. Uh, critical Materials Recovery Task Force. This is from Senate File 4523, Senator Hoschild. That's at 319. And then State Salt Purchasing Report. This is Senate File 4850 from Senator Morrison. And that has an $88,000 a year ongoing cost out of the Environmental Fund. Next, we have the Boat Wrap Stewardship Program. And that is from Senator Morrison, Senate File 3427. And that has a cost of 219,000 the first year. It goes up a little bit to 363 the second year and then back down to 219 ongoing. Um, next we have on line 22 is where we're carrying the cost of the Packaging Waste and Cost Reduction Act. Um, this is also being carried in this bill. Um, that has a cost, based on the fiscal note that we went through earlier, um, on the bill that came to committee. So the cost estimates of this may change a little bit based on the amendments that were made in committee that sent that bill separately to finance. But for now we're tracking about $1.7 million of costs in fiscal year 25 and then it goes to 1.448 in 26 and 1298 in the tails. That again is offset by a revenue of the same amount. So total for the PCA on line 24, general fund is 6.4 million one time. There's a 5.15 out of the environmental fund, and some of that is ongoing. And then the special revenue fund is at 1.784. That's for that uh, packaging waste bill. Total for PCA is 13.335 million in fiscal year 25 then a little over $5 million per year in the tails, but no general fund in the tails. Next, we have Department of Natural Resources. On line 31, the governor's budget had legal costs at 1.3. This proposal is at $1 million. Um, public safety costs, this was again a governor's item. General fund, $200,000, and the same here in the Senate bill. The next three items are Senate only items. Um, keep it clean grants. Um, this is a lake for uh, grants to lake to help clean lakes. And it is a uh, Senator Putnam bill. It's uh, Senate file 3957, I believe, um, for 1.418 million. Unsafe ice search and rescue reimbursement, uh, Senator Eichhorn bill, $200,000 one time. And there's statutory language in the bill that creates the program. Based on the fiscal note, this 200,000 will cover about two years of it. Um, and then after that, we'll have to, the future budgets will have to consider funding, funding that. Um, International Wolf Center improvements. This is Senator Hoschild build, 1.332 million. Next page, continuing general fund items here. Um, the Outdoor Schools for All bill, uh, Senator Hoschild, Senate file 3347, $2 million. Um, the next one on line 37, the condemnation of school trust land and uh, for Mille Lacs County is $750,000. This was Senator Kunish bill. This $750,000 um, Actually, 650 of that will end up going back to the permanent school fund to, because it is essentially purchasing the permanent school land, and then 650 of that 750 will end up going into the permanent school fund. And then the next item, outreach and education, 1.4 million dollars. This is an addition. This was a budget item in the uh, the environment budget bill last year, where 900,000 dollars was appropriated for outreach and education. 
and this proposal has an extra $1.4 million going to that. And $1 million of that goes to DNR, and $200,000 goes to uh, Bowser, and $200,000 goes to PCA. The next lines, lines 40 through 45, we're all in the governor's bill. This is some one-time funding from various accounts to, to uh, set up the new electronic licensing system. Lines 46 through 48, again, we're in the governor's budget. This is uh, money from three different accounts to help to pay for the increased cost for the compensation of the conservation officers. Line 49 is a Senate, uh, Senator Gustafson bill for non-lethal beaver management grants. And this is out of the Heritage Enhancement Account for $500,000, and this would just apply to the metro area. Line 50, report on recreational use of trust land. This was a Senator Kunish bill. That's $417,000 from the permanent school fund. That will pay for that. Um, next three items, 51, 52, and 53, were all from a Senator Hoschild bill, sent 5048. And there's three components in that bill that had a cost. One was the Gas Production Technical Advisory Committee. The next one was a regulatory framework for gas and oil production and then a legislative report. These appropriations would all come out of the minerals management account. Um, so totals would be 1.253 for the technical advisory committee, 750,000 for the framework and 1.5 million for the legislative report. The next, or yeah, the next one is the ATV grant and aid trail. That one's the, on line 54, excuse me, that one's the $1.5 million for grant and aid, ATV grant and aid. Um, Prospector Loop Trail, 1.2 million. And the grant and aid one I'll note is one time, not ongoing. Uh, Prospector Loop Trail, 1.2 million, one time. And then the off-highway motorcycle ambassador program, two hundred thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars, ongoing. Uh, last item here for the DNR is the outdoor rec for underserved communities. The budget bill last year included some lottery, uh, a new lottery in lieu account for underserved communities, um, and it was we had to make some estimates about how much money was going into that account. And currently the appropriations are for fiscal year 25, $600,000 out of that account. This proposal would add 200,000 one time out of that account for the intended uses, which would be grants for under, that serve underserved uh, communities for getting children out. So, um, the last item here for DNR is was in the governor's bill on line 65. It's simplifying the and eliminating the goose permit. There would be a slight reduction of $31,000 of spending in the game and fish fund that goes with that. There's also a revenue loss that I'll get to later. Um, so the DNR totals on line 68, it's $8.3 million from the general fund. Uh, line 69 is a little over $6.3 million from the Natural Resources Fund, and that's mostly for the various uh, accounts where the, the ELS um, costs are coming from, the ATV costs are coming from the Natural Resources Fund, and the Minerals Management accounts come out of the Natural Resources Fund. Line 70 is the 417000 from the Permanent School Fund for the the report on recreational use of trust lands. And then the Game and Fish Fund has costs of almost 2.7 million. That is mostly for the increased compensation of conservation officers and also um, the cost of ELS and the Beaver grants com coming from the Heritage Enhancement Account. So the total for DNR is 17.75 million in fiscal year 25, and then most of that money is one time. The tails amount is 1.119 million per year. Next, we have the Board of Water and Soil Resources. There are two items here, both general fund. 
The manure management grants, this was a Senator Gustafson bill, Senate file 3527 for $2 million one time. And then the Red River Phosphorus Management, Senator Kupek bill uh, at $300,000 one time. The next, uh, the last item, spending item here is uh, an appropriation from the, the lottery in lieu account that is just for Metro Parks. It's uh, using $500,000 out of that account one time for additional fishing piers in the metro, air, in metro area. So this appropriation would go to Met Council and it would go to the member park organizations that are part of the Metro Park system and they could apply for um, grants or they, Met Council would be able to allocate this $500,000 to their member park organizations for an installation of new fishing piers. So the total for all the agencies here, you'll see on line 84, is the $17 million of general fund, and that's one time. And then considering all funds on line 89, it's a 32.11 million. Revenue changes in the bill, there are just a few items here. Um, I already, on line 93 is the cost recovery for the, in, for, for the environmental justice areas, increased spending. That's at 2.975 million per year. This was the governor's proposal. Line 94 is for the packaging waste um, cost reduction at, and this is 1.784 million, and that's a cost recovery for that program also. Line 97 is a loss of 102,000 per year for eliminating the early goose permit from the Game and Fish Fund. The line 98 is the $650,000 that's going into the permanent school fund for the, kind of, for the Mille Lacs County land purchase. And then line 99, I'll note here, there's a, we're carrying a, a revenue increase for the off-highway motorcycle fee. This was an amendment to Senator Hoschild's Senate file 4242 that would increase the fee for off-highway motorcycles from $30 to $45, and we're carrying an estimated revenue here of $100,000 per year. And right now, the, technically, the, the language is not in the bill. We'll have to add that as a, a technical amendment to make sure that that fee increase is in the bill, but we're carrying it on the spreadsheet, so it should be included in the bill. Um, the lands article generates some one-time Revenue for the land acquisition account, uh, 312000 in fiscal year 25, and then look, small amounts in the tails. The last page of the spreadsheet just shows how we meet our target. Um, I'll just note on line 105 shows the total spending that is current, currently in the February forecast for this budget area. It's a little over a $1 billion. And you'll see for fiscal year 24-25, you see it's a little over one billion dollars, one billion six hundred or six million three hundred seventy six thousand. And you'll see on the tails it goes all the way down to four hundred and twelve. So a lot of the spending in the base budget for this committee that we enacted last year was one time. And then the the increased general fund spending in this bill is seventeen million on top of that, but that is all one time. And that is it for the spreadsheet. Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Mueller. So, Mr. Stanley, uh, yeah, okay, and Mr. Miller will walk us through Article One. Yeah, um, Mr. Chairman, I can walk through Article One, and I'm not going to repeat everything that was in the spreadsheet. Um, I'll just note a couple riders that have maybe different language, or some riders that are not reflected on the spreadsheet. And then once I get through Article One. I'd be happy to answer any questions about the fiscal part of the bill. Um, so the version of the bill we're working off of, which should be included in everyone's packet, is SCS 3887A-7. So it's the A7 DE amendment to Senate file 3887. Um, the first page, um, or all riders for governor's items, including all the way down to second page. Starting on page, 
line 2.16 is the rider for the climate adaptation study. There's language later on in the bill that spells out the study. Um, composting grants on line 0.225 is from the Senator McEwen bill. All the language for the grants are right here. It's $2 million. It's not an ongoing program, so the language is all all the way up to line 3.19. The electronic recycling study, $150,000. That is a small, that is, came out of Senate File 3940, which was a larger bill about e-waste. This just takes out the, or funds the study. Um, next item I'll note is on page four, lines 4.17. There were three appropriations to the PCA in last year's budget bill that deal with lake cleanup projects, and all of them were going to be expiring um, this fiscal year. This extends those three lake projects um, by one extra year, so they'll have until June 30th, 2025 to complete their projects. Line 4.22 to 4.32 is that part that I talked about on the spreadsheet where we set aside $5 million of the appropriations from last year to be available for the matching money um, for the climate pollution reduction grants. And that's it for PCA. On the, DN the DNR riders start on page five. I'll note on lines 5.15 to 5.29, there is some language that was worked on with the Department of Natural Resources to sort of take a look at their legal costs and how to better address the budgeting of the legal costs between the DNR, the PCA, and um, MMB, and to report back to the chairs about if there's a better way to, to sort of try to budget for legal costs and a better way to fund them. So that's language, uh, new language on line 5.15. So, um, uh, next, I'll, next one I'll point out is on page 9, the outreach and education. This is where the $1.4 million is appropriated for outreach and education. Again, there was $900,000 in the bill last year for this purpose. This provides an additional 1.4 million to that and split some of it between PCA and, and Bowser. And I'll, on line 9.1, it creates, sets aside $200,000 of this 1 million that goes to DNR um, for a competitive grant program for nonprofit organizations. The next thing I'll note is The proposal on page 13 for the Met Council, this is the language for the fishing piers. Um, so $500,000 one time out of the, the Metro Parks Lottery in lieu account. And like I said, this would allow Met Council to select which sites would get the new fishing piers. And then the last item on Article 1, I'll note Section 6 covers page 14 all the way through 18. This is from um, Senate file 3887. This was a, uh, the chair's bill. This would just extend an appropriation for the, the um, Metropolitan or the Minnesota Aquatic Invasive Species Research Center by, it would extend it out to June 30th, 2028. And the notwithstanding language here on line 16.23 and 24 is the heritage enhancement statute. And that statute says 87% of the money that comes out of that account has to be used for field operations. And we're exempting the Minnesota Aquatic Invasive Species Research Center from that 87% um, field requirement. And that's all I have for Article 1 and the spreadsheet. 
members, anybody have questions so far on the finance? Uh, we will have another uh, time, uh, second bite of the apple later on, too, after we hear testimony from our agency. Uh, if not, then I'll just pass this to Mr. Stanley. Mr. Chair, uh, members, in your packets, there is a nine-page summary that goes through articles two through five. I am not going to walk you through that whole summary. Instead, I'll be working from the one-page document entitled Source of Language Included in Senate File 3887-DE. And what I'm going to do is just really quickly walk you through the bills that are included in Articles 2 through 5, and then I'll point out a few areas where language has changed since you last saw it. Uh, the first bill that's included is Senate File 3345, banning mercury-containing lighting. That's Senator Mitchell's bill. Next is Senator Hosschild's Outdoor School for All, Senate File 3347, followed by Senator Morrison's Boat Wrap Stewardship Bill, Senate File 3427. Next, you have Senate File 3444, Senator Gustafson's Non-Lethal Beaver Management Grants. Um, and then you have Senate File 3527, Manure Management Grants, also from Senator Gustafson. That's followed by Senate File 3557, Senator Kunish's Tax Forfeited Land and Indian Reservation Bill. Senate File 3882, Senator Eichhorn's Sheriff Costs for Unsafe Ice Rescues Bill. Then you have one section from Senate File 3940. This is Senator Kupek's e-waste bill, and the section that's included is the report requirement. Next is Senate File 3957, Senator Putnam's Keep It Clean Grants legislation. Senate File 4250, this is Senator Kunish's bill to require a report on the recreational usage of school trust lands. That's followed by Senator Hurst, Senate File 4433, modifying PCA enforcement authority. That's followed by another Senator Hurd bill, Senate file 4493, that clarifies some PCA rulemaking authority. Next is Senate file 4523, the critical materials recovery task force bill from Senator Hosschild, followed by Senator Morrison, Senate file 4850, state agency salt purchase bill, Next is Senate File 4910 regarding the cost, researching the costs of climate adaptation. That's from Senator McEwen. Then you have Senator Hosschild's Senate File 5048 regarding oil and gas exploration. That's followed by Senator Kunish's Mille Lacs County Land Transfer Bill, Senate File 5162. And then you have a few governor's provisions that Mr. Mueller alluded to. These, all three of these are in, you've not seen these yet, but all three of them are in connection with getting rid of the special goose season permit. And then I'll draw your attention to section 24, that's on page 42. This is a chair's initiative regarding DNR strategic land asset management program. That's a program that the DNR uh, operates that systematically looks at state land, how to manage it, when to dispose of it, and under what circumstances. And as part of that program, they look at opportunities for transferring land to tribal nations. And so this language on page 42 would require a report on how they go about doing that and any opportunities for doing that that they've identified. That's all that's in Article 2, and I should have pointed out when I started talking that on the right-hand column of this one-page sheet, you will see information about which sections you can find each bill's language in. Article 3 is Senator Hosschild's amendment to Senate File 4784 requiring coordinated project plans for certain projects. Article 4 is the State Lands Article, which you heard in this committee. Article 5 is the Packaging Waste and Cost Reduction Act, which you just heard last week. And then a couple places I'll draw your attention to where language has changed since it was before this committee. The first uh, concerns Section 2 and on line 19.29. This is the Sheriff Reimbursement for Ice Rescues language. The bill that came before the committee had a must on line 29 that has been changed to a may. And that's to reflect the fact that if you don't do that, 
you create an ongoing obligation, whereas the uh, money that was made available that Mr. Mueller went, I explained a few minutes ago, is only one-time money. So this change was made to acknowledge that fact. Section 32, the climate adaptation study has been modified to reduce the cost. That's on page 49. Section 34, this is the non-lethal beaver management language. On lines 51.24 and 25, you'll notice that it has been limited to the seven county metro area. Section 35, uh, the e-waste reporting language on line 52.18, you'll notice that the reporting due date has been pushed back by a year. And then I'll draw your attention to one change in Article 4. This is the lands bill article. The repealer here on line 70.10 is doing some cleanup in connection with the Upper Sioux Agency State Park changes that you all made last year. And one of the things that the, the bill does is repeal the statutory reference to the state park in state statutes. And a change was made to simultaneously repeal the reference to the state historic site that was at that park as well. So, um, and then the other thing that I will point out that Mr. Mueller alluded to is the language that goes along with the, the registration fee increase of $15 for off-highway motorcycles, as Mr. Mueller said, is not in the bill, but you will see it in a technical amendment on Thursday as it's part of the agreement. Mr. Chair, that's all I have. Thank you, Mrs. Stanley. Let's go to a um, testimony from our agency first, and then we will entertain questions uh, following that. I'd like to call um, to our testifying table um, Mr. Bob Meyer, Assistant Commissioner, Commissioner of DNR. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good, good afternoon, members. For the record, Bob Meyer, Assistant Commissioner, Department of Natural Resources. And thank you for the opportunity to testify before you today on Senate File 3887. Uh, the department appreciates all the hard work the committee has put into this bill, and it is reflected in, in the outcome today that you've just walked through. We thank you for uh, the work on the governor's supplemental budget and many policy items contained in the bill, and we look forward to working with you as we bring this uh, bill to final passage. I can stand for any questions that people have. Okay. So we want to call, um, let's see, um, MPCA, uh, Commissioner Kessler, is she here? Or maybe Tom, Mr. Tom Johnson? Maybe Bob, you, you, can, you both can stay on, at the table here. I think if there may be questions following this. Welcome, Mr. Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, for the record, my name is Tom Johnson, uh, Government Relations Director for the Minnesota Pollution Cr Control Agency. Also want to echo uh, my thanks. I'm obviously standing in for Commissioner Kessler, who uh, is on her way from the other body. But <laughs> um, uh, thankful to you, Chair Her and, and Vice Chair McEwen, uh, Lead Icorn, for all the and all the other committee members for for the work this year on on the bill. Um, there's uh, still some conversations that need to be had and some specific items we want to continue working on, but overall, uh, it's a very good bill and um, really appreciate the work uh, both on um, the governor's supplemental items and there's some exciting pieces uh, such as the Packaging Waste and Cost Reduction Act that the agency is very excited to see in the bill um, that originate from the legislature. So um, thanks for the opportunity and happy to stand for any questions. Okay, thank you. Um, also want to state that we have uh, uh, submitted letters and uh, regarding this bill. We got a letter from Conservation Minnesota, MC, MCEA, uh, Association of Minnesota Counties, uh, Minnesota Solid Waste Administrator Association, and Medical uh, Alley. So they are online uh, for those members and anyone interested. Um, any questions from members? You can direct questions, well, to me, but um, and then address it to uh, uh, the to the agency. And also, if I can't answer it, 
Mr. Mueller and Mr. Stanley here can um, put some details to your, your question. Senator Green. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't know that I have any specific questions right now. Uh, we just got the bill at around noon, and so I'm only about 30 pages into it so far. Uh, but I might have some questions later. But um, And I maybe missed this in committee, but the one thing I would say is um, I'm wondering why the change on page 20.18, uh, the existing language was uh, for leases for petroleum, and it was changed in a couple spots in the bill to gas and oil. Is there a significance of that? Mr. Stanley? Mr. Chair, Senator Green, if you are looking at the bill as it exists online, there was an amendment adopted when this bill was heard in committee, and because it was passed out of this committee after the deadline, the bill was then sent to rules as amended, but there's not an engrossment available that reflects the current changes online. I don't know if that's the source of the, the differences that you're noticing, but I can confirm that real quick if you'll give me just a second. That's, that's fine. Any time. I just, it's just something that it, it just seems strange that you're changing petroleum to gas and oil, and I was wondering if there was a significant reason for it, if it wasn't. Uh, but I can wait for that answer. Okay. Any questions from members? If not, we're, we're good to go. Um, we're not voting on this bill, on this amendment, A7, today. This, the A7 is a de de delete all, and we'll wait till Thursday to adapt the delete all amendment. Um, if there's any technical error that you see in this bill, do come see us before Thursday. Not the bill, the amendment, as, as it will soon become the bill. Any questions so far? Okay, well, um, thank you for your time uh, being here, members, and uh, it will be on Thursday. Uh, do expect a, a um, hard stop um, before 5. Um, your chair will have some duty right after 5, so uh, we, we do um, want to let you know. Uh, but we'll try to cover as much as we can. If you have a amendment, do... Uh, share with us, talk to your council, or talk to our council here as well. So thank you, and thank you for agency being here and all stakeholders, all lobbyists for being here as well. So uh, with that, and Commissioner Cashler, thank you for being here. With that, the meet meeting is adjourned till Thursday. <laughs>